I'm taking an Amiga 2000 from dusty and damaged to almost pristine, but the journey so far has not been without obstacles, from seeing the Amiga working at the end of the previous video. It's taken major surgery to install the upgrades I wanted, and find out why I'm putting an Amiga SCSI drive into a late 90s PC. So let's rewind to the end of the last video, where I teased the question of installing Amiga OS 3.2 from CD-ROM. That part went well. I have the system set up on the bench with the GVP-030 accelerator, SCSI and 16 meg of fast RAM. I'm using a 75 gigabyte SCSI disk and a 4x CD rewriter. Why use spinning rust? Well, I have one. And this unit is a server grade device, relatively new, and it didn't cost me anything, so why not? There is a certain charm to the sound and vibrations of a magnetic hard drive. Now for the 2 meg chip RAM. The Ramesses 2 is a solderless expansion to use the full ECS 2 meg Agnes. Now I was getting either a green screen or a yellow screen. Putting the original chips back in proves my fears. Gary is so loose I can pull him out with just my fingers. Using diorom and applying pressure to the sides of Agnes, this improves or at least changes the behaviour. Installing Ramesses 2 in this 30 year old Agnes and Gary sockets proved to be too much. This solderless solution has turned into swapping out Agnes and Gary sockets. That's 84 pins for Agnes and 48 pins for Gary, making this a whopping 132 pin soldering marathon, beating the 100 pin Zorro 2, hands down. Fate, it seems, is not without a sense of irony. You'll also notice I've added a coin cell battery adapter and added the extra slots to make the two 8 bit ISA slots full 16 bit. The reason for this will be revealed in a future video. Right, take two. Ramesses 2 and Diagram installed. This confirms the existence of 2 meg of chip RAM. Thank Commodore, we can put this board back in the box. But before I do, this is missing the undershield, so let's build something out of plastic to give it a little bit of protection. With the board back in, we're on the home straight. Just a reverse of the teardown. And the CD ROM drive, instead of the five and a quarter floppy. the addition of the accelerator and SCSI drive.
The mouse I have works, but the buttons are a little on the sticky side. So I'm just giving them a quick clean and reassembling the mouse. That should sort that out. Now for that old SCSI drive, I need to image this for Chris. I went through a few iterations of hardware to get this drive to be visible. I also needed to be able to run an OS new enough to be supported by Amiga Forever, particularly the version that has the imaging functionality, but old enough to support the compatible SCSI drive. Well, my £3 PC to the rescue. It actually took what felt like a hundred tries to get this drive to spin up and register on the controller. Once it did, imaging the drive is a simple process. Let me know if you'd like a video dedicated to physical disk imaging. There are some more upgrades planned. So join me for the next part of this journey soon. Thanks for watching. And why not check this out next?